You know, when you watch a dramatic anthology show, you should not be confused while the show is going on at the end of what this all occurred or what I call the happening. Now, Night Gallery was like that every once in a while. So was Twilight Zone. So was a lot of the dramatic anthologies through the years. But this episode of Night Gallery, some people believe it was all in the character's head, while others believe it was science fiction, and others believe the, uh, the main character was insane with a bit of a youthful weirdness in her like you know an early stage uh, bipolar or whatever uh, whatever it is 50 years later we're still shaking our heads as to what Brenda means now Brenda was a season 2 episode of Night Gallery uh, and uh, it was uh, filled the same uh, uh, one hour show as uh, Midnight Ever Ends the uh, Rod Serling takeoff now in this one uh, and we're going to use David Jewell's great blog spot to break down some of the plot teleplay was by Douglas Hayes under the pseudonym Matthew Howard with story by Margaret St. Clair. Alan Reisner was a director with Glenn Corbett of Star Trek Metamorphosis fame as Richard Alden. Lori Prang as Brenda Alden. Robert Hogan as Jim Emson. Barbara Babcock as Flora Alden. Sue Taylor as El Elizabeth Emson. Pamela Ferdin uh, as Frances Ann Emson. And Fred Carson as the Thing of the Peace. Now, spending her summer vacation on an island where her parents have a cottage, Brenda is strange, uh, strangely socialized a 12-year-old girl. Seeing uh, sometime playmate Frances is on the beach, putting the finishes touches on an elaborate sandcastle. Brenda doesn't walk up to the girl to engage her in conversation about her creation. Rather, she marches purposely at it and stomps through the thing, pulverizing it while making heavy animal noises. Then, she wants to make friendly conversation, but Frances Ann is traumatized and understandably upset and is in no mood to share pleasantries through her tears. Brenda has an unusual way of trying to make friends and uh, the character at this point We've only seen her in a few scenes, and we think she's off a rocker. When no one left to talk to, Brenda heads off by herself into the woods where, upon hearing a rustling sound, she sees a sort of creature that frankly looks like a guy in a big heavy suit, covered in leaves, some moss, and long fur. Uh, sort of like a combination of man thing and swamp thing. Like Brenda, it may be lonely too, or at least very curious. Scared, but also curious as well, and no doubt desperate for a friend, Brenda calls out to it, Here I am, can't catch me, and she leads on a sort of tentative chase through the forest. She gets a ways ahead of it, then settles down near the grassy edge of the pit to watch it approach. Not knowing the terrain, terrain as well as her, the monster falls into the pit. Slightly injured, it gets up but cannot scale the steep, rocky inclines of its walls. While it attempts to extricate itself from its prison, Brenda taunts and teases it some, but also shows a more thoughtful, sympathetic side as she muses aloud, I think you're very, very old. I think you must have been the way you are for a long, long time. The creature holds up her, its arms at Brenda, seeming to request her help. She leans down to extend a helping hand and asks the creature, What are you waiting for? Don't you want to be born? It's a very odd segment that had me believe, uh, Jewel believing this was likely all in her imagination. Like some people think so, but there's a sexual aspect to it as well, which I don't want to get into, but some people have mentioned the fact is that it's like love at first sight. Hmm. Now that night, Brenda leaves the door to her house open after doing uh, finger puppets, hoping her new friend might come calling, and it does, causing a great commotion with her parents and neighbors as they drive the creature out of their home with flashlights, then torches, and if, and if the previous scene didn't make you think of Frankenstein, this one certainly does. Brenda's delighted because they can't kill it, as she says. The townsfolk drive the creature back in the pit and cover it with stones, and Brenda and her family leave the island as summer is ending. Now, uh, he, she basically talks to the animal in the pit, said, I'll be back. The next summer, uh, seemingly much more mature, she returns to the island in the pit where the rock pile remains unchanged. Brenda is going to maturation since last summer, gone her braids and her manner is less childish. She speaks emotionally to the creature within the rock pile with a tear in her cheek, promise it will be born together. I'll give you love. We'll be born, you and I, together. Now, uh, don't really know what that means. Is it fairy tale? Is it like a really Anna Green Gables plot gone freaky? Now, what a, what a strange and unique story this is indeed, according to Jewel. While all over the map in some ways, too literal perhaps at times, and with a creature who is laughably lame in terms of 2022 standards, 
uh, this was 1972. This is an example of how Night Gallery, even when not entirely successful, was ambitious and could create memorable stories that would not be attempted elsewhere. Special mention uh, must go to Laurie uh, Prang, who was 19 at the time when she played a part of Brenda, for creating a character who seemed alternately insane and just a girl lonely for human understanding. Now, uh, when we say insane, I don't know... Looking for attention and insane is the same uh, uh, category. But on third, fourth, fifth viewing, there's three things happening here. Uh, you know, becoming a woman and the change of life from, you know, preteen to teenager or whatever. And the fact was, the big plot hole is, if there, uh, if they had a big animal this big, wouldn't the authorities be called in, covering it with rocks, thinking it was going to, you know, uh, it couldn't be stopped just the rocks over it. It's allergic to rocks, and he glued the rocks on uh, the creature. And it's kind of weird, like I said, if you know Anna Green Gables, the, uh, what are they, uh, what do you call the uh, daydreaming plots were part of it, especially in the movie version, where she was uh, pretending she was dying and uh, on the boat, and there's water in the boat, and she freaked out. It's a very, very, I don't know, female-centric uh, you know, young fairy tales uh, style, but the special effects of the monster are just low rent Star Trek, like the salt monster. But this is like the salt monster, but with with more hair and more. I don't know what's going on. So I give it two and a half stars out of four uh, for uniqueness. It's a four out of four, but for a strange plot and the the the, the way Brenda goes on, my God, a couple of slaps wouldn't have hurt. Back in the day, this is 1970, not in 2022, but she needed to be disciplined because she's <laughs> when you when your daughter invites a monster that she's found back to the house, you gotta sign her in. I wouldn't see this 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 would never be a bunch of Canadians. The Canadians would have signed her in, say, you know, you're nuts. And Brenda's nuts. You only but is she nuts? Because she's overly intelligent, is it Asperger's? We don't know. Is it autistic, bipolar, or whatever? Anyway, but uh, the the performances is very very interesting performances, and the extended version of the episode of syndication is much better than the traditional episode. So there's extra scenes. So thanks for listening. If you like what we're doing our Night Gallery podcast, give us a like, comment, subscribe, or share. And don't forget, requests are always appreciated and always highly considered. Have a good day. Bye.